Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to My Gospel Soul with Janice Jackson. Remember, stay true to your gospel soul. What does your soul bring in the news to your ears? This is the place for Talk Radio. Call in and join me. Welcome to Blog Talks Radio, My Gospel Soul. My name is Janice Jackson, coming to you live from Houston, Texas, every day, Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Central Time. We have a fantastic show for you today. This evening, this evening we will be uh, talking about a family that prays together We'll stay together. We are. Uh, we want to extend um, extend the phone number to you to let you know that you can call in today. Today is a discussion. Does prayer work? Does your family pray? Have your family fell off of praying? This is Monday's Gospel Hour, where we are totally talking about the Word of God today. Um. As you know, I am a pastor, and so Mondays I set aside for uh, speaking the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, today, again, we're talking about a family that prays together. You've heard a lot of people say prayer is the key. Faith unlocks the door. So today, that's what we're going to be talking about. I would like to give a shout-out also to my uh to my co-host, sometimes she calls in, sometimes she don't, but I count her as one of my co-hosts, Pastor St. Mary. If you're out there listening, uh, I want you to know that I love you, and my, uh, I look forward to uh, hearing you on the air at, a late, at another time. i also like to give a shout-out to uh, Sister Patricia Williams. She calls in from time to time as well. Um. We will, like I say, we will be talking about a family that prays together. We'll stay together. And and uh, we want you to text. We want you to start a chat. We want you to uh, even uh, email me at P-A-S-T-O-R-J dot Jackson at live dot com. Send me a message. Get in contact with me, and your emails will be read over the air. You can also, uh, if you would like to be a listener of mine, of this specific show, My Gospel Soul, I want you to go to www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash J, that's capital J, E N uh, lowercase E N N I C E. 
capital J, lowercase, A-C-K-S-O-N. And I want you to become a listener. I want you to become registered. Register yourself. Become a listener. And our call-in number is 347-826-9424. Give us a call. We also want to give a shout-out to my brother, Billy. I I told you, during uh, our radio show, you will, when you hear this sound bite. Web, 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 where is Billy? That will let you know that we have a call from Billy Cook, and uh, he'll be telling us where he is and keeping us up on his tour that he's on right now. I want to run some key uh, some key questions by you. Is your family praying together? Or are you allowing the stress of what's going on in the world today to keep you in bondage? Are you allowing that to keep you in bondage, especially if you are a spiritual family and you know to be praying right now? Prayer is what's going to bring the hope and the peace to your life. Prayer is what's going to help you uh, not to really look at the situation and get lost in it. Prayer is going to help you find a solace about what you are going through. Now, it says in my uh, description, it says, does does your household lack prayer? Is your husband or wife going to church and it is causing a problem in the home? What do I mean by that? Are they going to church so much till you don't see them at home and it's causing stress? Well, I find out that <clears throat> when you have a family that a family and only one person is serving God and the other person I'm just not going to serve God. You're just not going to get me to serve God. Well, I find out if you accept the fact that they have their belief. Now, in the word of God, it says to not be, it says to not be unequally yoked. And it says that for a reason. Because a lot of times when you get married and that person is not believing what you believe and then say you got to go to this you got to go to this church for a certain situation you got to go over here and 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 uh, and minister over here or you have to you want to go to a prayer meeting and all of this it causes conflict cuz that other person don't believe you have to do all that much and we have my uh friend sister williams calling in uh, you're on the air Hello? Hello? I was just listening, but since you put me on front street, I guess I'll check in. I was just <laughs> listening because I'm at work. But uh, okay. you I, can... I just got in, so I, I didn't really hear what the topic was today. Okay, well, I'll keep going, and then where you want to come in, I'll, I'll open it for you to come in. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Um, so as I was saying, you know, look, the Bible says to not be unequally yoked. And the subject today is a family that prays together will stay together. And like I said, so so oftentimes, like when you got that one day uh, in the Lord and they, they go from place to place, so they love to go to visit different churches and and it's just like if you, it's just like any other religion. You know, I'm a Christian. I'm a, I am call myself a Christian because we we call ourselves Christians for shape, form, or fashion sometimes. So I have to say Christian to help people uh, uh, remember what we are really, who we are really uh, in this thing for, and it's for Jesus Christ to spread the gospel. So like I was saying, in any religion that you are in, you're going to find that person that's going to get it, that's going to study their religion. They're going to study their belief. And when they are linked up with someone who is maybe of a different belief uh, belief or religion, uh, it tends to irritate them because they don't understand why you do some of the things that you do. That's why it is best sometimes for us to for, for just like the word say, to not be unequally yoked. 
I mean, because I can tell you all day long, a family that prays together stays together. But if you got someone that does not believe what you are praying for, especially if it's your spouse, your prayers will be hindered because they are not they are not believing what you are believing. Now, I myself, I myself, I, I am married to a man that believes God, that believes in prayer. So it keeps our family close, even when even even when different situations arise in the household or arise. You know, and this is just broad. I'm not talking about my household. I'm talking about any household where you have two people who believe the same thing and they trust and they pray to the same God, you will have more harmony in that family. Even when stressful times begin to present themselves, if that if that if one person is oh is going to and that other one knows, well, let's call on the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Let's put this uh, before God. Let's let God have this. Then you'll you'll find out that that peace and that hope will come back to the household. It also says, does does it seem like the more you serve God, the worse your spouse gets? That's exactly what I just I was just talking about. It's not that your spouse does not love you. They just don't understand or believe what you are doing. And it causes them it causes them to rebel. And they may say that they are not, but the truth of the matter is they, they want to irritate you and aggravate you because that's how they feel inside. And uh, uh, we also know that it's also an attack of the enemy on the household. But if you know about a civil war, a civil war is where the people within the country fight against each other. When the people within the country are fighting against each other, it's easy for somebody on the outside to come in and take over. And I have to uh, explain to you that that's what the devil loves to do. He loves to come in and he loves to destroy a place that is already, see, he already has to have something to come in and has to get y'all started. But if he can't break down that force, if he can't break down that force that y'all have built through prayer and fasting, then he can't get in. He can't mess with what's going on inside the house. But if you let him in any kind of way, he'll get in there. So imagine having one person say, Trusting God, praying to God, and not only do they have to battle with the spirit of unbelief outside of the house, but they got to come home and got to battle with it at home. So that's what we are talking about today on My Gospel Soul. Uh, the call-in number is 347-826-9424. Hey, call in, we want your comments. Uh, today I really want to talk about how to help you get hope. I heard when I was coming up, I told you before that I, that I was raised in the Church of God in Christ. But I have been in the Baptist Church. I have been in the uh, Methodist Church. I have been in the uh, Holiness Church. And, and, the, and, and it's the same. You serve God. You know, it's each, each religion or each title, ministry, they have their different, uh, we call it tweaks. But they have their different things going on, but the bottom line is serve, serve God. The bottom line is Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, that we may have a right to the tree of life. Prayer is an open conversation with God. It's an open conversation. It's your communication with God. We're going to talk about today laying on our face with God. We're going to talk about how serious it is. Where did that come from? Uh, uh why do we have to lay? Do we have to lay on our face? You know, we have a lot of people that have an attitude. I just walk around and I just say, Lord, you need to come through for me. You know, and uh, it's a time and place for everything. It's a time and place. God say, bring His word back to Him, His promises back to Him. Remind Him what He promised you. But it's also a time where we have, we need to humble ourselves. We are going through. Uh, the world is going through a recession. 
and a lot of people need hope right now. And I'm telling you, if the family could bind together and begin to pray, I'm I, uh, not just pray before a meal or pray at night before going to bed. I'm talking about if y'all just set aside a time where the whole family comes together and pray. And let each child, let them say their own personal prayer. You know, this is just something that, that should be like a part of a part of the routine of your family. Now, the next question that we that we also are going to talk about today is have you seen an improvement since your recent dedication or re uh rededication uh to a godly life? It said then this is okay, when sometimes we fall off and there's nothing wrong You've been sitting in church, and the Lord has told you to to get up and rededicate yourself to me. You know when the pastor say the doors of the church are open, and you know you done fell off. You know that you and sometimes some people only only come for prayer when they're going through. But sometimes we have gotten lazy in God. Sometimes we have gotten so comfortable to we are not still doing the things that we used to do in God. We are not still dedicated the way that we were, and God wants us to rededicate ourselves to him. We got some people that can do a whole lot of things in ministry but are not doing them. See, we have, we, what I really, really want to touch on today is how can we restore that hope to our family? And what does my rededication to God have to do with it? It has a lot to do with it. Because if you have let your, it's a song I listen to all the time, Kirk Franklin. It's on Kirk Franklin's album. It says, uh, uh, come back to your first love. I love that song because it's, it's, it's real. It'll make you think about when you first started serving God and you was on fire and you was, moving and this now I've been serving God. Me myself I've been serving God for almost uh since uh ninety eight. And I ask God constantly, Lord, let me stay on fire. Let me let me let me serve you like never before. Let me put out my all in you. You know, whether people say uh Pastor Jackson, Janice or whoever, it don't matter. What I because when I lay my head down at night, I want to feel like I, if God take me in my sleep, I want to know that that I have done everything that I can to show the Lord that that I love Him. I want to make sure all my service is unto God. Now, uh, dedication to Him, prayer, prayer. Now that's dedicating your family to God. That's the subject today, a family that prays together. We'll stay together. Now, dedicate your family to God. God gave you your family. Give your family back. Don't make a move without praying to him. The family get up, everybody's head. One is headed to school, the mama headed to work, the daddy headed to work, you know, and I listen, everybody separate. And without a thought, you expect God to allow you, y'all to come back together in that one house. And now it, nobody applies the blood of Jesus to the family. Nobody stops to say, uh, uh, Lord, bless our family as we go to our places, uh, to our destinations. Lord, let us return home safely. Nobody ever says it. You got some families that won't, won't make a move without praying. And that's a good thing. Because you are also teaching your children how to trust God and how to have faith. Now, we're in a time we need hope. We need hope. Who is hope? Jesus is hope. Jesus is hope. Prayer is the key. Faith unlocks the dope. If you'll check out my blog on MySpace, if you check out my blog on MySpace, you will under you will uh you will get a chance to comment also 
on this subject. Faith, faith, faith is our work is dead. Prayer is a part of your work. Prayer is a part of your work, your conversation with God. We also talked about on this show about the Holy Spirit, how we we need the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit can comfort us, but the Holy Spirit also, when we are tired in our body, keeps our keeps us keeps us communing with God, because our body is weak, and when our body, when our flesh is weak, the devil attacks us then too. You go out and you work all day long, all day long, all day long, and the next thing you know, here come a bill, here comes somebody knocking at your door. But if you have prayed and you have stared some extra strength somewhere, you have prayed and you have invested your time and your energy in the Lord, when your flesh is weak, you can still stand on the word of God. You know, I run I run here, I run there, I do this thing and that thing, and, it, and my body be tired. But God still allowed me to get up on on a Sunday morning Bible study, whatever, and run and do whatever I need to do and still can give him the highest praise. Because God didn't, he didn't have to spare my life. He didn't have to allow me to uh, be married. He didn't have to find a man that loves and respects me. He didn't have, have to let all my children be healthy. He didn't have to, he didn't have to, you know, he didn't have to preserve me in a way to where I can not worry about things. I can just have faith in him. He didn't have to give me another chance. He didn't have, he could have left me out there in my mess. How do we find the time to pray? How do we find the time to pray? If you are running so, so much that you just don't have time to open your mouth and, and pray to the Lord, you can be driving in your car, and the Lord will bring a, bring a spirit of prayer over you, and he'll just say, he, you'll just start praying. That's what God, he wants to hear. It, ain't, it don't matter where you are. Now, we are going to get into praying uh, prostrate, that uh, means on your face. We're, we're going to get into that. But we want to talk about, we, first I want to talk to those that say, well, I'm too busy to just do that. You know, how would you feel if God said, well, I'm too busy to just uh, bless you with enough strength to pay your car note, to work and pay your car note? Well, I'm a little too busy to answer that prayer you prayed the other day. I'm too busy to, to come in and uh, uh, make sure that you got good health. I'm too busy to, to remove that uh that lump they found on on the you know. I'm too busy. How would you feel if the Lord say I'm too busy? When he gave you life. We just celebrated Resurrection Sunday. We just celebrated that. And every church on Resurrection Sunday be full of people. Be full of people. Members that the pastor ain't seen in years. But the pre- the pastor still has been praying and cover your soul while you've been out there just running, ripping, running the streets. Or you've been attending other churches that you feel is better than the church you, you know, that you are a member of. Oh, they got more going on over here. But that's for another day. That's for another day. Hit on that. You are a member of the church, so why aren't you a team? Now, a family that prays. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures that, and we're just going to. Now, in Jeremiah 29 and 13, it says, And you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me. With your with your heart, with all your heart. Now that's 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 serious right there. He's saying if you seek for me, if you seek for me, we got a crusade coming up in the scriptures, Second Chronicles seven and fourteen. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves, I get stuck on the humble themselves in the den. 
that's in that scripture. I know y'all tired of hearing, but humble, humble, humble. We got to humble ourselves. Amen. So it says, it's saying, seek me. You and find me. Seek me. The word of God also says, seek me while I may be found. While I may be found. Because it may be a time you pray and and your prayers don't go no further than the ceiling. So when you are close to God, see, now is a time that that God is real close, very close to his people. Very close to his people. It's kind of like an immune system. You know, you, you can your immune system can be built up, but when your immune system is low, you, you, are, are, you are in a very tender place, and you need some extra backup. And it seems like your backup be there, but you got to do a little, a little yourself to help your backup get rid of what's trying to attack your immune system. Jesus is that, is that, is that backup. But unless you call on him and unless you seek him, he can't come and attack that and get rid of that that is bothering you. Now, he can. He can go in, but that will be forcing your will. He can go in. Get, but let me tell you something. It says if you seek him, it says you will find him. Now, I want you to understand, it says these are the conditions of success. Therefore, in, in Mark, this is about faith. Therefore, it says in Mark 11 and 24, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that which ye re- receive, I mean, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. Or you pray in prayers and really don't believe what you pray. That's like shooting yourself in the foot. Well, I'm going to pray this because he said pray this, but I, you know, but in the back of your mind, I tell uh, people all the time, it's harder for us to believe God for ourselves. I mean, it's easier for us to believe God for somebody else and harder for us to believe God for ourselves. We can see it happening for somebody else, but when it comes to believing for ourselves, we have the hardest time. The same God that moved for your friend, for your mama, for your auntie, for this family and that family can move for yours. Marriages and relationships that are on the rock. You've seen other people get back together and God increase them a hundredfold. God can do the same thing for you in your marriage. But you got to first give yourself to him. See, I can promise you, I can say this, that, and the other, but I, I'm a, I'm a human being. You got to trust and believe what God say, what His Word say. You got to believe Him and believe what you are praying. It say, if you can see it, if you can see it, what thing, what thing soever ye desire. When ye pray, believe that ye receive them, come on now, and ye shall have them. Glory to God. Now, we also see, I'm giving you some nuggets today. Now we're going to go in, okay, well, okay, if I'm believing, I'm believing. Now what is that? Like in the scripture say, if my people which are called by my name will armor themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. This scripture right here in uh, uh, talks about righteousness. Confess your faults one to, to another and pray one for another. That ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We always say prayers of the righteous availeth much. But if something that comes before that, confess your faults one to another. See, today we're talking about family. I'm not talking about your friends. We're talking about family. So during that family time, when y'all are all sitting there, somebody, uh, uh, a husband should be able to tell his wife 
or, or the children should be able to tell their parents, I'm having trouble in school. And we keep so much from the children till they don't know that, that you're going through financial problems. But, see, that's why it builds a false sense of uh, security around children until when they get in the real world, they don't know how to live. They don't know because you've got to let them know these are the bills are tight. But if we believe and we bind together and we trust God, God going to come through for us. You have to let them know, yeah, we are going through something with our money right now, but but God. But God. Amen. That's righteousness. We just talked about righteousness. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availing much. Now it talks about obedience. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments. That's first John three and twenty two. Because we keep his commandments and do the and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Glory to God. Now I have reached the uh I have reached the halfway mark of my show, and uh, uh, my subject today was a family that prays together will stay together. And uh, so I'm going to go into notable prayers. We're going to go to notable prayers, and we're going to talk about postures in prayer. Notable prayers or the prayer is the uh, prayer with Abraham for Sodom. That's located. In Genesis 18 and 28, David, when denied the privilege of building the temple, that's in 2 Samuel 7 and 18. Solomon, at Gibeon, that's 1 Kings 3 and 6. Solomon, at the dedication of the temple, 1 Kings 8 and 22. Hezekiah at the invasion. Some of these words in the Bible are hard to pronounce. A sack of a sack of crib. A sack crib. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But these are prayers. See, because some some of us are, don't have confidence in praying. We don't know the words to say. We don't know how to say it. But but praying to God is a conversation with him. It's saying it's saying how you feel about him. It's saying how you how much you love him. It's repenting if you know you have done things to separate you from him. Prayer is just that easy. It's acknowledging first first acknowledging that you have done wrong. First. And then come to a place of repentance. Lord, please forgive me. Lord, I need you. Then it's going into the next where you're asking him. Lord, I need you. And you letting him know. See, God is not to those that are of a contrite heart and spirit. Broken and contrite. What does that mean? You, well, my heart got to be broken? No. What he's saying is you got to understand that you need God. You can't go and pray a prayer. You you expect God to show up for you, but you don't really need God. You you got the attitude that you don't really need him. But that's what he's saying about humbling yourself. Do you really believe that you need it? Or are you just praying just to be praying? I'm praying because they say prayer works. But in your heart, in your heart, that's what that contract. Do you really believe that the way that you were living and the things that you were doing and the things that you are doing in the middle of doing are wrong? At first, at the, at first and foremost, do you believe that God is your Lord, that is your um, that Jesus is your Lord and Savior? Because it say no man cometh unto the Father but by Jesus. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. You hear, you hear a lot of pastors and preachers say it because they they understand and they know that unless you go through the Son, see you, that's why I say in that scripture, if my people, 
It says, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Jesus got to hear from the Father. Jesus takes it to the Father. Our tests and trials come to make us strong. True. They come to make us strong. Now, they, to make us strong in what? To make us strong in God. To make us strong in God. Tests and trials do come. And people see serving God as a negative thing because they feel like, why well, I got to go through to get to. But in life, in life, whether you serve God or not, you're going to go through things and, 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 and people say it in the world. Well, I went through that as a learning experience. If you didn't go through that as a learning experience, you wouldn't be stronger today. You wouldn't be wiser today. So it's the same thing in serving God. If you're out there listening and you are, you are, you are uh, shaky in your understanding about why people go through and they say they serve God and all this, let me help you today. We have trials and tribulations just like everybody else. But the difference is we, we can call on the name of Jesus. He said, come unto me, all ye that heavy laden and all over heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me. He said, my yoke is easy, but my burden is light. He tell us all of this. He tell us it's because God wasn't no sugar coat. Jesus, when he was down, he wasn't no sugar. He didn't sugar coat nothing. They told him you eat, you eating with the you you eating with the uh, sinner. He said, "Yeah, I eat." I, he he <laughs> he said, "I eat with those that need me." I eat with those that need me. People people. A physician goes to work on people that need to be healed. That need to be that need to be worked on. That need him. So we we got to that's that's a part of prayer. That's a part of a family praying together. We need God. Now, the position, the position to pray in, you got the position of bowing. You got the position of kneeling, where you just kneel. Kneeling is a, is a sign of humility you, when you kneel. They had a, they had a tape, cir- uh, uh, tape circulating about Obama bowing, uh, showing inferiority to uh, to to we're not talking about that same type of bow. We're not talking about that. We're talking about we're talking about knowing that you need God. And that's a lot of time. A lot of a, a lot of times we we don't know to do how to keep politics and church uh, separate. Politics and church separate. Now we can pray, pray for our president. We can pray for our this that, and the other. That's fine, but when you allow politics to get all over into the gospel of Jesus Christ, you're starting to mess it up because it says we're free from the law. Not saying that you need to go break the law, but it's saying that grace is, for example, by law, I, 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 am, I am a statistic by law, but by God, I'm a woman of God. By law, I am a statistic. Hmm? I'm a black woman. I have children. Uh, you know, I am a statistic. But by God, I am a woman. I'm a child of God. I am a friend of God. By God. By Jesus Christ dying on the cross. What am I saying? We are no different. We are no different from other believers that God has delivered. Other believers that God has brought out of brought out of uh off of buses of living out of a bus or living out of a car and, and, and blessed them with houses and blessed them with singing careers and blessed them with this, that and the other. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. 
And what God give, he had no sorrow. But like we have, we have discovered today, you got to ask him. You got to ask him with a pure heart. And you got to ask him in a way where, and God ain't, God, God, you can't fool God. That's why God say a liar will not tarry in his sight. Because you'll get in his midst and try to lie to him. And, and sometimes when we pray, we are lying because we say, Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you to move. Lord, I trust you. Lord, I And then as soon as we get up off our knees, we out there trying to do our own thing in the situation. We ain't led by God in the situation. We ain't asked God for direction. I always say, Lord, I trust. And then the first thing we do is go out there and do something silly and get the whole, it's a whole, it's a bigger mess than it was when, when we supposedly gave it over to God. Now, the last part I want to talk about is on the face before God. Let me give some examples. In Numbers 20 and 6, it says, And Moses and Aaron went uh, from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And they fell upon their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. So that's what, that's why we say pray on your face. Because when you pray and, and you're on your face, glory to God, God moves for you. He moves for you. His glory, not just a moving, but his glory. You'll feel his glory all over you. You'll feel his glory in the situation. Hallelujah. So that's what it's saying. It says, lay on your face. Now, Joshua 5 and, and 14 says, and he said, nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord, am I now come? And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, what saith my Lord unto his servant? See, he knew, now let me bow, let me get down, let me get down low. Let me get down low because I want the Lord to understand that. I, I know it ain't I, I know that I need to hear a word from you and I know that if I can get just on my face and you can not only uh hear my humbleness, you can see my humbleness. You can see, I, Lord, I just wanna get down here before you. I just I just want to lay right here before your feet. And it's kind of like a child when their parents begin to talk to them. They, the child will get right on the floor and sit Indian style and listen to what their parents have to say. And that's how I feel when I go when I go into prayer. I like to get down on the floor and lay there and just, just lay. And then I just picture myself laying at his feet while he talks to me while he tell me the things that he's going to do in my life. Why he said, child, I hear you, and I'm going to bring you out. Child, I know you're going through, but I'm going to bring you through. It's the same thing in, in our family, in our family. If we realize that, if we just begin to, I remember when I was coming up, my mama used to have us get around in the living room. And we some of us be kneeling on the floor, and some of us just lay down on the floor and everything. And, and she, she'll have each one of us to pray or, and, or quote a scripture, and then she'll get to praying. And the next thing, before we knew it, my daddy was in there, and he was praying. I'm going to pray this time. He started praying. And guess what? We stayed together. We stay together. Now, we got to try our adult life, but we all know how to come back together. It was eight of us. My daddy worked in and out of town. It's nine of us. And my daddy worked in and out of town. But my daddy came on home, and when it was prime time, we all was down there. But God... He wants to show you increase. He wants to give you hope. He wants to help you in your faith. It is say, oh, you a little faith. But let me tell you something. You can even pray and say, Lord, increase my faith. Right now, I'm seeing so much till I'm losing. And God will, God will increase your faith. Now, 
through that is that sincere prayer. Through that sincere prayer, through that humbling yourself. That's why you can get, if you listen to some people, you'll hear them testify how God, how how since they started going to church, how their the husbands and wives were more together. When their children started trying to play them games with them, manipulate them, and how they, they, they did a united front. They stood together. When bills and stuff would do, the husband lost the job. The wife, she was built up in God enough to know to hang in there with her husband. When he went through all times and he felt low about himself, that woman come through with that strong word for her and pray him through. A man that finds the wife. You have been on the air with My Gospel Soul, where the subject today is a family that prays together will stay together. Our call-in number is 347-826-9424. You you also need to go online and register at Blog Talk Radio www.blogtalkradio.com. Become a listener of My Gospel Soul with Janice Jackson. Mondays we have our, uh, our Hour of the Word. Tuesdays we have Tuesdays we have our on up to the truth. That's what's coming on tomorrow. On up to the truth. On the 15th, we're going to talk about the procrastination spirit. On the 16th, we're going to have in the news in your city. On the 17th, you know it's Talk About It Friday. We want you to tune in for more shows with us as we're knocking out the kinks because this is a new show. So we're knocking out the kinks. We got some uh, people that are in line for interviews and for uh, exciting shows about health, about diabetes, about Coumadin, which is a which is blood thinners for those who have who get blood clots and it deals with the heart. We got a. Uh, we got a pediatrician coming on talking about how important it is to make sure your children have their shots. Uh, we got some awesome things coming up. We also we got Pastor St. Mary that, that drops in from time to time and gives us gives us a nugget of wisdom. We got Sister Williams that, that calls in from time to time and give us hard hitting uh 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 straight to the point uh comments on a lot of our different uh a lot of our different topics. We want you to go into our archive show and check out and check out uh Young Women, Where is Your Self Respect? That was a hard a heavy hitter. We want you to also go into our uh archives and check out and check out uh My Family is All in My Business. That was an exciting show. <laughs> Pastor Jackson, how you doing? I'm sorry I wasn't able to participate today. I listened, though, and I thought you had some great, great, great advice regarding prayer. You know, prayer is just like uh, anything else you do. If you want to perfect it, you got to practice it, you know, and prayer is the way that we communicate with God. That's the only way we can communicate with him, and prayer is not... Uh, it doesn't have to be like the Pharisees. It doesn't. It's not a set way to pray. It mm-hmm. is a set way to ask for things. God tells us that we have to ask in Jesus' name mm-hmm. and believe that we receive. But we can talk to God just like we're talking to each other right now. Amen. Mm-hmm. But we don't always have to be prostrate. You know, a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Some people have maladies in their knees. They can't get down on their knees. But it's just like you say, the key is the humility in your heart, the humbleness of your heart. Because that's what pricks God. That's what pricks him is the humbleness in your heart. 
he knows if you're humble or if you're just being facetious and just, you know, you, you, you're just asking because you think that that's, that's the way you get more and more and more stuff. Prayer is a way to commune with God. And as a Christian, as you said, if we want to be followers of Jesus Christ, we want to please God, and nothing pleases them more than prayer. You know, Amen. Uh, sometimes we're too tired. We we feel like we're too tired, but God knows our heart. And if we say, Father, please forgive us for our our uh, slowfulness, you know, and for my slowfulness, but hear me, Lord, hear me when I pray, you know, because my heart is humble. But you, your advice today and your scriptures was right on point, you know. I just a family that do pray together, stay together, and the enemy can come in like a flood sometime. I mean, and quickly, you know, mm-hmm. just on the way to church yesterday, me and my husband got into a spat right mm-hmm. before we was getting ready to walk out the door, and it wasn't mm-hmm. about nothing. The enemy, <laughs> and I love the way that you, in praise and worship, how you have us go around and say some people might need a hug. We were both huffing and puffing and upset and mad. But when you said that, and I went to him, and I apologized, and we hugged, and we apologized to one another and straightened it out. But it was over nothing, but that's what prayer did for you. You were so right in your today, and I really appreciate the show. I I couldn't participate because I got to work late, and I had to catch up. So. Well, we thank God. We thank God for for Sister Williams uh, because we – we have to see because so many times we we let you we're letting you know those that don't know it's the ominous like she said it's the ominous in your heart it's the sincerity when God hear that when He hears that voice you know and when when like she's saying it doesn't always have to be prostrate but at least you know what why people say prostrate. Why why they say on your face, you know, why they say that? Because sometimes that's where you are. Sometimes you, like, just like he said, he had to lay on his face and then say, Lord. <laughs> you know, and like he said, when you in, you could be in your car. You could be, you know, it does not matter. And sometimes people, and a lot of people use that excuse. I don't have time. I don't have time. I didn't have time to pray this morning, you know. And and we have to. My my uh, fourth grade teacher used to tell me all the time. She said excuses, and she had the whole class to learn this. Excuses are monuments of nothing. They be a bridges to nowhere. In other words, you are, you're not going to get anywhere with that excuse. With an excuse. So we have to try not. Let's not make an excuse. Let's make some time. For God, because God always has time for us, always. And you're listening to My Gospel Soul with Janice Jackson. We got some, we got some, like I say, some good upcoming shows, and uh, Sister Williams is, is uh, still listening in, praise God, and we want to pray for her with Travel of Grace as she. I don't know if she's in a car or she is right now. Yeah, but, uh, I'm in my car. All right. We pray for traveling, Grace, for her. And, again, we have today with a family that prays together, stays together. Tomorrow we're going to have Own Up to the Truth. And we're going to be talking about the truth and as it pertains to the Word of God. On the 15th, we're going to be talking about the procrastination spirit. That is Wednesday. In our future shows, we want to be exploring unsung heroes, people who uh, are in your neighborhood, in your community, uh, that you that you would love to say something about. And in future shows, we're going to feature an unsung hero, whether it's your pastor, well, Whoever it is, we want to feature them. That means interview them. Give them a chance to tell us what they're doing in the community, the things that they have coming up. My Gospel Soul is a show about promotions as well. So if you have a CD coming out, whatever you have coming up, 
get with Janice Jackson, you can email me at pastorj.jackson at live.com. And uh, I will get back with you. Uh, please leave your contact information so that I can get back with you. We have a crusade coming up at New Covenant Fellowship Church where our pastor is Pastor Ricky Gidry. The address is 4513 Peyton Street, Houston, Texas, 77051. If you cannot make it and you're out of town, but you would love to donate to this cause, to this uh, to this crusade, because we have a health fair coming up as well, then you can email me. I will get back with you, and uh, we will get we will we will fellowship and and and, and figure this thing out. If you want to be a part, of what New Covenant Fellowship Church is doing. Again, our pastor is pastor. Ricky Gidry. We also want to let you know that uh, we have plans for our upcoming ministries as far as the women's ministry, as far as uh, the children's ministry, and a whole lot of other things that we got on our minds to be doing for God because we want to be found being busy. It says, be about your father's business. We have three more minutes left on the air, and I just want to give a shout-out to my mom. Uh, she wasn't feeling well last week. They took her to the emergency room. We prayed. We talked about it. We talked about it Friday. We talked about it. We sent a prayer out for her, and she came out of the emergency room. They ran her blood, everything. She is fine, and we thank God for that. Uh, again, if you would like to become a listener if you would like to become a listener of my gospel soul we would like for you to go to www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash capital J lowercase e n n i c e capital J lowercase a c k s o n and you can also email me uh, at pastorj.jackson at live.com. You can tweet me. You can catch me on Facebook. And you can catch me on MySpace. So we got you covered on every end. There's no excuse. So tune in for more great shows on My Gospel Soul. I want to again thank uh, Sister Williams for tuning in today. Sister Williams. Well, we want to thank Sister Williams for tuning in today. She's still listening. Uh, we want to say God bless you, and uh, we pray for traveling grace for you as well. And remember, stay true to your gospel soul. Welcome to My Gospel Soul with Janice Jackson. Remember, stay true to your gospel soul. What does your soul bring in the news to your ears? This is the place. Love Talk Radio.